Finals. Let's go on a quick break now. We'll come back. Basketball will get our attention. We'll listen to Hakim, the dream of Laju. Arguably, the biggest exports uh, for sports in Nigeria. He has done everything you can think about in basketball. Been there, done that, won the NBA title. He says to develop basketball in Nigeria, we must give attention to grassroots. And of course, the Tigers, they now know the teams they will go against to pick up tickets to the 2016 Rio Olympics. You want to know? They stay. When I was growing up in Nigeria, we have a soccer field in front of our house where we, we do play. And that's where all the kids, we have to every day after school, playing soccer all day. The same thing has to be done for basketball, having soccer goals, soccer goalposts around neighborhoods to raise the awareness. I think the awareness is more, is more important. And of course, things are so dense where you don't really have that much space. And I think that's where um, it's lacking. We don't have enough common area to just put common goal for taking kids away from getting into troubles. They put their passion and love developing to love in the game. And basketball is a game that, uh, just like soccer, basketball, once you taste it, it's like a magnet. You love it and you want to play all the time. Well, I think the, in, in, in the corporate world, the, when, when they see the benefits, you know, because they have a lot of businesses there already, uh, well, there's no better way to get the exposure than to active in community where you give them back. And the best way to give back is where you can actually see the, your, your money being spent in the right area. By, for example, if your company chooses to promote basketball, just be, be branding a basketball goal and donate like a, a court for a neighborhood. I mean, you can capture the attention you get a lot of exposure. So it's not just to, to like encouraging or forcing the, the corporate to sponsor, but to know the benefit where the, the advertisement or b budget, fraction of that can make a huge impact in the basketball arena that can promote sports. And also at the same time, there's a mutual benefit of the exposure for their brand. So that's it. That's it. You heard from the legend himself. We must create avenues where you can create awareness for basketball. So he's saying the open field areas, we should go mount rooms there, encourage kids to go play. That. That's how he grew up playing basketball. And I spoke about, he also talked about corporate sponsorship. You cannot ignore branding and then expect a brand to come you know give you money so that's it that came a you on telling us ways we can develop basketball in nigeria and he, i mean not far from it he said it all grassroots basketball development is the way to go yeah, that, that's the only way to go um going deep down into the surface mm. to on head gems you know that, that that's that's the only way to go because people want to associate with finished products but th then again when you um focus on the grassroots that is the production that is the production line and you know to ensure that you keep turning out this kind of talents and bringing them to you know global recognition you have, you have to go to grassroots i heard a story i don't know how true it is i had a story that he was actually playing football and, and somebody saw his eyes and said yeah, you you'll be a good uh, <laughs> and, and and that's what happened at the grassroots yeah a lot of people invest time and energy into these young lads and that's why when some of them become uh, big stars they're always grateful say what you say what you want about akim the dream you, you could say that he did all he did for uh the united states but it's a nigerian story Mm. It is a Nigerian story. All it's of us can always feel things. feel part of it. Uh, growing up, I was always proud. Back back in those days, watching him play for the Houston Rockets, right. uh, be part of uh, that dream all-star dream team. You know, to to, to be able to say, oh, this this is a Nigerian uh, that has you know got into the pinnacle of his career. There, there are other Africans too that you, you could put on his level, the Kebe Motombo mm -hmm. um, as well. But this guy has done so much and you know when people like Akim speak, I want to take them seriously. And I hope that all the things that he has said, you know, that will begin to put them uh, into practice. And that is even what could bring people like this back home. And once people like this back home, they don't come empty and dead. A lot of things come 
come with them. A lot of people want to partner with them. They can bring their friends and, and all that. I remember, you know, uh, the Kevin Mutombo's activities in DRC and, and, and in South Africa, all the things that he's been able to do, the positive if, impact. And I'm, I'm hoping that Akim, too, will be able to do that for That's us in Nigeria. Nice. That's right. Akim already uh, telling us ways we can uh, develop basketball and we need to listen to him because, I mean, that's a champ right there in any way you want to talk about it. Now, uh, to the Tigress, Nigeria's um, senior women's national uh, basketball team, they are going to feature at the Olympics qualifying tournament. So, they are getting ready. The story is that they've been grouped in Group C alongside Belarus mm -hmm. and Korea. That shouldn't give Not the Korea. Tigress uh, some uh, sort of worry. Well, yeah, I think they, it should give them a whole lot of worry because this is a qualifier for the Olympic. They did not qualify through the uh, uh, Afro Basketball Championship. And um, this is a time that they would need to qualify and they know that they have to do that well. So um, they will be playing against a Belarusian side as well that is equally good. And a North Korean side too that is um, one of the um, most um, tricky side when it comes to basketball. Uh, um, in the world. So they really need to come with their A game to make sure that the play well, is actually a South Korean side. And you know when it comes to basketball, the Asians are equally good too. So Nigeria will have to come with their A game. Now, um, the top two um, in the uh, group, four groups. In, in the top two in the um, four groups would qualify for the Olympics proper. This is like a playoff yeah. for them and is a qualifier for them to qualify. The last time Nigeria qualified for um, the Olympic was um, way back in uh, um, um, Beijing 2008. That was the last time that they qualified for the Olympics um, then. So um, this time around, they would need to make sure that they qualify. And um, yes, and they have to start preparing because even the South Koreans and the Belarusian are probably preparing already. Yeah, I mean, we saw the quality of the Tigress at uh, the Afro, Afro Basket Championship in Cameroon. They lost narrowly, lost narrowly to the host uh, to make it to the final. Then they went on to win bronze. They can carry that momentum to the OQT and pick a ticket. Well, you know, sometimes when you have a break, sometimes it's not easy to maintain that same level. Mm. Exactly. That's the only problem that I have. Quality never in doubt. Nigerians, mm. that, that can do spirit. I, I mean, Nigerian, I never never bet against that Nigerian, Nigerian spirit. spirit. You know, he has a flip side. When I know you did it today. You <laughs> yeah. lost the money. He <laughs> has a flip side. When you expect them to do well, yeah. sometimes they don't. But when you least expect, when, when you think they're dead and buried mm. and you're about to start nailing the coffin, that's where the that Nigerian that spirit just, come out. just yeah. comes out. And so I, I, I'm not going to call it an impossible task. It's possible, but it's going to be very, difficult. very difficult. That's right. But, but I, I want to see the girls mm. uh, at the Olympics, so give us another reason to, to talk about sports. Um, you know, and it'll be good because the men have already qualified. Yeah, I, I yeah, make bold to say even, that they, even if they qualify, uh, they may not be in medal range, but at least participation is the main reason for the mm. Olympics. Mm. Uh, yes, and, exactly. And, and I want them to be at that party uh, at the Olympics. Mm. Yeah. Pictures from the Afro Basket Championship last year in Cameroon. Uh, that's the game that uh, the Tigers painfully they lost by just a point. Uh, to Cameroon, but they went on to uh, win is it against Angola for that yeah, matter they went, went on uh, to for the bronze uh, medal. So all the best, D Tigress. We now know uh, the opponents for the Olympic qualifying tournament. We just hope that the Nigeria Basketball Federation will get to work on time, open the camp early. These girls start preparing because the OQTs will begin in June. Okay. okay. Let's go back to Twitter, guys. I love what's happening tonight. So much talks. Um, as regards the Super Eagles, um, I'll start from the African Nations Championship. Shimezi Oguru says, while I won't want us to crucify Coach Sunday Olise, yet he must take responsibility for his loss. Besides, we weren't planning to win. I think he took responsibility for his loss. I mean, he actually said um, they were sorry. He yeah. said he wasn't happy with the way the team played and he came out and he said it well. So he took responsibility for uh, um, the loss. But then, if we look at it in all the ways, this man made changes when he's supposed to make changes. Now, he tried every tactical knowledge that he knows, but then it's so simple. The story is that the team did not just play well and it is not just the, it is not the 
fault of the coach in this uh, at this time yes he should take responsibility for how his team played but then you just have to understand that a lot of people were saying things like where well, yeah, he doesn't have experience he doesn't have this he doesn't have that and that was why nigeria lost for me, I do not think it's that. I mean, in the first game, you saw the changes he made and everybody applauded him. In the second game, he made the same changes as well and we applauded him, but we told him, fine, do this. And he did that. Mm. So, for me, yes, he has taken responsibility. Let's just move on and let us just learn from this mistake. That's right. So, I mean, Cosmos, I want to say thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you very uh, much. Analysis on point as regards Nigeria's ouster from the African Nations Championship. We'll go on a break after this tweet on basketball. So, the bad man says this.